So I'm going to sterilise my used compost for my seed start mix. Here's how and why you should too. So I've just made my big massive pile of seed start mix and I took you guys along for the journey in the video but I said that I would also show you guys uh, how I sterilise my compost for doing that so that's what we're doing so last year I actually did a little snippet about sterilising your compost in a video and it blew up. I couldn't believe how interested you guys were. So I thought I would do it again this year. Last year, I showed you a very quick way of doing it using boiling water. If you've only got a small amount of compost to do, it works brilliantly. But this year I'm doing quite a big batch. So I thought it was a prime time to tell you guys about another way to do it by baking it. So the boiling water thing I did last year is super simple. Basically, you just use boiling water and soak your compost, okay? You want to make sure that you use enough boiling water that it gets in all of the compost. Give it a good mix up, cover it with your tin foil and leave it to sit for half an hour. It's that simple. But the thing with that is that you're proper soaking your compost. So for me, in Scotland, where it's cold and wet all the time at this time of year, it takes a long time to get that compost to dry out again, enough that I would want to then use it in my seed starting. So that's why I only do that for small amounts, because it's easier to dry a small amount. Today, I've got quite a lot I want to get done. Here we go then. Why would you want to sterilise your compost, whether it's new compost you want to do it with, or if you're like me and you're reusing your compost in your seed mixes. Well, really simply because there is the potential for there to be nasties in there you don't want. Things like there might be funguses in there, there could be insect eggs in there. Think of things like fungus gnats and aphids. You really don't want to be reusing soil that's got that kind of stuff in there. And if it's something like fungus gnats and aphids, you probably want to think about this, especially if you're taking that indoors and you're using this in, say, seed starting indoors or even your potted plants indoors. So that's a good reason to do it. Now, it is dead simple. It's not complicated in the slightest. But there is one thing. I'm doing this in my big outdoor barbecue, my gas grill, because it can potentially be very stinky. So although you can do this in your home oven, you might not want to if you can get away with it. And I know Kate would kill me if I do this indoors. So we're doing it outdoors. So first things first then. You want to make sure that the compost you're going to be baking is damp. Not soaking wet, but damp. The reason you want to do that is because you're wanting it to generate steam while it's in there baking. That is part of the whole process of doing this, okay? And then what I do is I put it into these little tinfoil trays I've got for baking. They're little disposable ones. You absolutely don't need to do this. I choose to because then I'm not using like dishes I would use for cooking in the house and that kind of thing. For me, it's just about keeping this stuff separate from things we're going to eat from. But, you know, you don't need to buy fancy trees for doing this. It's just my thing. So I put a nice layer in the bottom. Um, I try not to go too deep because the more compost there is, the longer it's going to take to get up to that temperature you want. So I only put in like maybe a couple of inches deep and then cover it loosely. I've got the original kind of foil covers that come in my trays, but you can just use tin foil if you want and just put it on. So make sure it's loose enough that if that steam really builds up pressure, it can escape if it need to, because you know, you don't want a boom in the oven. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so get your oven up to temperature, right? You want to preheat it. And remember, we're going to go hot here. That's the key. You can get proper into this and get really scientific if you want. If you guys are really into that one, you can go and have a wee Google and you can actually get tables with all the temperatures that will kill all the different things. And it will say, do 30 minutes at this temperature to kill this. 
I'm keeping it simple here. So I'm going to say go to 85C for about 20 minutes, okay? And that should pretty much kill everything you want to get rid of. Now, here's another thing that's handy to have. I don't have the fancy cooking thermometers that you can put in the oven and leave there. Instead, I've got these and I just take it out and check on it, okay? And if it's not up to 85, then I put it back in and I just keep checking, keeping an eye on it, okay? But what I want to see is it getting up to 85C because that's the good temperature that kills the beasties. And quite simply, that's it. 20 minutes then, bring it out, Put it aside, let it cool down, and you have just sterilised your compost. Now, a wee note, because somebody once said to me, worrying about uh, baking it actually gets rid of all the nutrients. It's not technically correct. Baking it will kill off things like vitamin A, vitamin C, that kind of thing. But all of those nutrients that we want in there for the plants are mineral nutrients. It's things like your iron and all of that that is not going to get killed off or baked off at all. Okay, it's not going to affect that, so don't worry about that. So as promised, here is the video that I think might be useful if you're interested in seed starting mixes. But as always, I hope it was useful. And remember, if you like the video, click the thumbs up. Feel free to chat away in the comments. I do love a good chat. And click that little subscribe button if you want to make sure you're notified next time I post a video. See you, folks.